Hey everybody, Ezra here, and today I'm going to be doing a new album review. This time I'm going to be reviewing the new Joji album, Nectar. A bit of background like I do in all my reviews. How do I overall feel about Joji and the kind of music he has been making? Now to really talk about Joji, you have to go back to the Filthy Frank days, which I really never enjoyed that much. I know, looking back, a lot of, you know, people from my age group and a little older kind of look back at the Filthy Frank stuff and act like he was some sort of comedy pioneer. I don't see it that way. I don't hate him. I didn't think it was great either. Now, he did do the Pink Guy album, which is another thing where it's like, it is what it is. I wasn't crazy about it. It wasn't until he actually started going under the Joji name that I think his music started to get a bit more compelling. Um, the last project he put out before this, I thought was decent. It was far from being great. It was very average, in my opinion. So going into this Nectar album, I was hoping that he would make his best project yet. Because even though I was not too crazy about some of the music he had put out previously, I liked the direction. I liked the overall style. I just wasn't a big fan of the overall songs and the atmosphere in the albums. So going into this album, you, we see Joji continue on a very R&B, hip-hop influenced path here. No surprises there. And like a lot of his other music, there is that lo-fi production, lo-fi vibe throughout. But... It's a weird kind of lo-fi production, because it's not really lo-fi, but it's made to sound lo-fi. It's far from being lo-fi, if you know what I mean. But it tends to have these filters on there that kind of muffle things a bit, that make it feel more lo-fi than it actually is. You know, overall though, when you actually dive into the track list, you do get a good amount of variety here and there. But unfortunately, a lot of them do end up kind of blending together. Uh, I will get to that later. You know, it opens up with Ew, which has a good kind of interesting piano and string arrangement. This is a theme that comes up quite a bit throughout this album. There's a lot of strings and little piano and little ditties like that. And some of them turn out better than others. I think on Ew, the opening track, it actually did come across well. But on a lot of other tracks, it just comes off as unnecessary, to say the least. You know, songs like Modus, you know on the other hand, has a good atmosphere, has those good instrumentation, but then you get the beat, which kind of kills the mood of the track, that sort of like traditional hi-hat hip-hop beat that you hear a lot. Unfortunately, I think that hurts the track modus quite a bit. It kind of distracts from the song. And this is something that happens quite a bit. There's usually a good part in the instrumental, and then something comes in and kind of kills the vibe. The song TikTok, too, is another one where it has a good instrumental, very, you know, soothing, very intriguing instrumental, but it's just an annoying flow. His flow on this song, to me, is very obnoxious in many spots. Um, so that drags the song TikTok down for me. However, there are some highlights on this album. Run was a single that came out. Not only does it have a great vocal delivery and great vocal performance all around, it genuinely has an interesting little guitar solo at the end, which threw me off guard at first, but I will say that I actually do think it is a really well done solo that does add a lot to the song. And throughout it, it does have some interesting guitar melodies played throughout, so I also really appreciate that. The song Daylight as well was another highlight for me. I really liked, once again, the instrumental palette was nice and soothing to the ears, and just like Run, some great vocal performance there from Joji and some good guitar work. So, there's a theme that you might be catching on to when it comes down to vocals. He has a good voice, and when he uses it well on a certain track, it can come across really good. Whereas, when he doesn't use it as well on some tracks, it definitely can ruin a track. You know, Give Me Love, for example would have been a better track if it, if the vocals sounded better there. Probably one of the, my least favorites on this album. But, for the most part, this album rides that fine line between um, going overboard and not doing enough. What I mean is that you have songs like Run, where that guitar solo at the end, as good as it is, can feel a bit just in your face. Whereas a song like High Hopes on here... It's so lo-fi and so acoustic that it's so mellow that you wonder what else they could have done. And at the end of the day, if there's one song I have to pick that's my overall least favorite, it'd be Pretty Boy. 
probably the worst song on here. Very cliche, very gimmicky, and that song did not just that song didn't do it for me. And I, the last song I really want to mention here is Seven Hundred Seventy Seven, which I enjoyed the little synth bass going throughout that song. Now, overall, how do I feel about this project? In many ways, it's underwhelming. I mean, it's underwhelming, but not bad. I was hoping that it would be better than it is, but I don't dislike it. You know, it has some underwhelming vocal delivery, and overall, the arrangements are very bland in many spots. And there is a lot of short, lo-fi filler tracks throughout this 18-track album which bring it down quite a bit, you know, uh, Mr. Hollywood, for example. These are just songs, in my opinion, drag this album down quite a bit. But I will say there are some really good synthesizer, good electronic pads, good atmosphere to this album. I do appreciate, I do think Joji did execute the atmosphere quite well. And at the end of the day, even though there was a lot of complaints, I feel like he did what he was aiming to do, but he didn't do much more. So that is why I have settled on giving this album a solid six out of ten. Anybody that knows my reviews or don't knows anything above a five is good. Anything below a five is bad. So a six out of ten is far from being the worst. It's also far from being the best. It's kind of in the middle there, but a little above average. I did enjoy this project. It just once again, I feel like Joji doesn't go as far as I wish he would. But that is it for now. Joji Nectar, 6 out of 10.